Amen. amen. And amen. So I want to go back to our half Torah portion tonight and talk to you about Uzzah and the Ark. Uzzah and the Ark. And this is Lean Not Unto Your Own Understanding, part two, a little series here. Don't follow the dictates of your own understanding. In other words, too many times in our life, we try to figure out what we think God's thinking instead of reading His Word and knowing what He's thinking. Amen? It's kind of like politicians quoting things that they say are in the Bible that aren't in the Bible. And everybody's like, eh, where is that at? That's not in Scripture. Well, I know it's there. Well, you can know it's there and still not be there. Amen? We need to know the heart of the Father, the mind of the Father, what He thinks on every subject as it concerns our life. Amen? If I have a little Volkswagen bug, which I'd never probably fit into, and I was needing to work on it, and I borrowed Brother John's manual for his Suburban, Chevy Suburban, right? Chevy Suburban to work on my little VW Bug. How many of you know there's going to be a disconnect? Amen? Listen, the owner manual to our life is the Word of God and the Holy Spirit and our Heavenly Father. Amen? So let's look to His Word to find out those areas in our life that need some changing. How many of you need some changing in your life? Always need changing. You never reach a place where you're satisfied where you're at. Someone say amen. amen. Or someone say oh me. So let's get started here tonight. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verses 5 through verse 9. Then David and all of the house of Israel played music before the Lord on all kinds of instruments, of fir wood, on harps, on stringed instruments, on tambourines, on sistrums, and on cymbals. Sounds like an awesome worship service, doesn't it? But. Everybody say, but. but. No, y'all didn't say it loud enough. Say, but. but. But, here's the problem. You can do all the right things. But, if you're not walking in obedience and surrender to the Word of God and to the Lordship of Yeshua, our Messiah, you're missing the whole boat. And I'm going to show you how they missed the boat on this. So they've got the instruments. They've got the praise going, man. They've got the worship. Man, they're just having a Israeli worship service and praise service. Because David, who's king over Israel, wants to move the Ark of the Covenant from where it was to his house, to Jerusalem. So it would receive the blessing of God. The Ark of the Covenant is where the presence of the Holy Spirit was. It's the mercy seat. It had the tablets of the Ten Commandments placed in it. had a little bowl of manna placed in it. Aaron's bud that had uh, uh, budded, Aaron's rod that had blossomed was inside of it. All that was in the Ark of the Covenant. And so they're moving in and they're having a praise service, but look what happens. And when they came to Nachon's threshing floor... Uzzah, who was walking alongside the cart, put out his hand to the ark of God, took hold of it, for the oxen stumbled. Now, how many of you know, at first thought, you're thinking, well, Uzzah's doing a good thing. He's trying to help God out. You ever try to help God out in your life? Everybody say, God doesn't need my help. He doesn't, we need his help. Amen. I need his help. So it's better for me to obey what he wants me to do than for me to try to help God out with the situation. So Uzzah, and you're going to understand this before we get done tonight, he, the, the ark starts to wobble. It's on a cart. And the oxen tripped and stumbled. And so Uzzah puts his hand out to steady it. Seems like a good thing. Then the anger of the Lord was aroused against Uzzah. How many of you know when your name is in the Bible, prefixed with the Lord was aroused, the anger of the Lord was aroused against you, it's never a good thing, amen? And the scripture tells us in Hebrews that these things that were written in the Old Testament, it tells us in the New Covenant, were written as examples for us, for us to learn from. Oh, I am finished reading. Then the anger of the Lord was aroused against Uzzah, and God struck him there for his error, and he died there by the ark of God. 
You see, the natural man, this is the way we are. We think, well, God shouldn't have killed him. This is just trying to help out. And that's what we think. And I'm going to show you because when we take that same attitude of taking what God says and saying what He says doesn't matter because my own understanding is going to be higher and more prouder and be what I'm going to follow rather than following God's Word, that's where there's a disconnect and that's where we get into trouble in our life. Now check this out. And David became angry because of the Lord's outbreak against Uzzah. How many of you ever got angry at God about something? I have. How many of you know when I got angry at the Lord, I had nobody to blame but myself? Amen. Now, it took me a while to come to repentance and figure that out. It did. I was blaming God. And then one day I was like, uh-oh. The whole problem, the whole issue was me. Everybody say me. me. Have you ever been there? Yes. Listen, God's blameless, faultless. But what happens is things don't happen the way we think they ought to happen. And so we blame God. And how many of you know we live in a society that wants to blame everything around us rather than take responsibility for our own selves and our own lives? Yeah. Step one is learn to be honest before God about where you are with Him. He already knows. It'll help you. It'll set you free. Now listen to this. So David's angry because of the Lord's outbreak against Uzzah. You see, David, at this moment... And David was a man after God's own heart, but he was not perfect. Amen? Amen. And at this moment, David's in the flesh. He's like, God, Uzzah's just trying to help you out. He's trying to steady the cart. Of course, the Ark of the Covenant was fixing to fall. The oxen stumbled. Why'd you kill him? And he called the name of the place Perez Uzzah to this day, which in Hebrew means outbreak against Uzzah. Because Uzzah died. David was afraid of the Lord that day. And he said, how can the ark of the Lord come to me? He was afraid if he moved it, other people would die, maybe even himself. Now, I want to go back and let's look at what the Scripture says about this and let's see why the Lord did what he did to Uzzah. Why was Uzzah struck down for appearing to simply be a help, helping God out? Let's find out. So the first thing that we need to do is go back to the Torah, the book of Exodus, chapter 25, verses 10 through 15. This is God the Father's instruction to the nation of Israel and to the priesthood about how to handle holy things. And they shall make an ark. This is talking about the building of the Ark of the Covenant of acacia wood. Two and a half cubits shall be its length a cubit and a half its width, and a cubit and a half its height. So it's about yea big. Okay? And you shall overlay it with pure gold inside and out. You shall overlay it and shall make on it molding of gold all around. You shall cast four rings. Everybody say four rings. Four rings of gold for it and put them in its four corners. Two rings shall be on one side, two rings on the other side. What do you think those rings are going to hold? Let's find out. And you shall make poles. Everybody say poles. poles. Poles of acacia wood. Overlay them with gold. You shall put the poles into the rings on the sides of the ark. That the ark may be what? Carried, Carried by what? By the poles. Don't say you think about put the ark on a oxen cart and carry it and haul it. The way you haul lumber or whatever they hauled in those days. God designed this thing with poles for the priest to carry it. Are you following me? So what happened? So what happened is, it started with the leadership of David. David was in a hurry. See, oxen would be easier. How many of you ever get caught up in doing things the easy way instead of God's way? God's way is not the easy way. If anybody tells you his way is the easy way, they're lying to you. It's the best way, but it's not the easy way. It's not easy on your flesh. Your flesh is going to scream out, oh, no. That's because the flesh is dying. It's being crucified in Messiah. Amen? So that the new you 
like a caterpillar coming to life and turning into a butterfly, can come out and come to life. Amen? Now look here. And this is interesting. Verse 15. The poles shall be in the rings of the ark. They shall not be taken out of it. Wow. So we're going to make rings of gold, put them on either side of the ark, put the poles in it. And then we're going to leave the poles there, never take them out. Why do you suppose the ark had rings attached to both sides? For the poles, to hold the poles. And why do you suppose in verse 15 above, the poles were never to be removed from the sides of the ark? To always be a reminder that the ark was to be what? Carried by the priest. It's got poles. There is no doubt in your mind that's what it's meant. Amen. How many of you know God's ways? I didn't say that they're always easy, but listen, they are always right there for you to follow. Do you follow me? They're right there. I mean, plain as day, the poles were inside the rings on the ark as a reminder to carry the ark. But what happens is we try to do things our way rather than God's way, and our way always ends up in disaster and failure. God's way always ends up being the harder way because the flesh doesn't like it, but it brings such blessings of peace and grace and mercy into your life. How many of you experienced that? Amen. When you say, Lord, I surrender all of my pride, all of my will, my ways, and myself to you, there's a release, there's a freedom that comes from that when you stop fighting against the Father. You see, or, or we'll give Him a piece of us, but not all of us. He wants all. Everyone say all. All, all of us. <clears throat> now look at this in Numbers again. This is the third book of the Torah. Fourth book. And when Aaron and his sons have finished covering the sanctuary and all the furnishings of the sanctuary, when the camp is set to go, then the sons of Kohath, everybody say Kohath. Kohath. This was a family within the family of the Levitical priesthood. And the sons of Kohath shall come to carry them. But they shall not touch any holy thing, lest they what? So who was to handle the holy things? The sons of Kohath, this family in the priesthood. And even they couldn't touch the stuff. Everything had to be moved by poles. Everybody understand that? And what would happen? What did God promise would happen if they touched it? So was the Ark of the Covenant a holy thing? Did somebody other than the family of Kohath handle the Ark? Was anybody supposed to touch the ark at any time? Goodness, all they had to do was watch Raiders of the Lost Ark, right? How many of you saw that? Remember what happened when they opened it up? God, not far from the truth. Anybody touched it, you die. I don't think the Lord could have made that any simpler or plainer. Amen? How about in the Scripture when no immoral fornicator, adulterer, effeminate, greedy, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Can't make it any plainer. He said it. You may not agree. You may not believe it. But one day you're going to find out. People are going to find out. Every word of God is yes and amen. Whether they like you or not, it is. And I'm telling you, it's easier to submit and just fall in love with God. Amen. It says, these are the things in the tabernacle of meeting which the sons of Kohath are to carry. And they went through. The book of Hebrews tells us that these things in the Old uh, Testament, in the Tanakh, in the Torah, were written for our example. Everybody say, my example. This is a pretty strong example of what happens when we try to do holy things our way rather than God's way. I think it's Russ Taff came out with a movie recently. And Russ Taff was one of the, these uh, uh, singers, musicians, back when I was a young person, when I was a kid, and famous and up there worshiping, singing. And he comes back and says, I was drunk most of the time, wasn't surrendered to God. I wasn't surrendered to the Lord. So you can go through the motions and do all the right things, 
but your heart had better be in the right place. Amen. Don't touch holy things lest you die. Something of God's presence in the Ark of the Covenant seems to be lost in the body of Messiah in the church today. <clears throat> in the time of Moses, the people knew the awesomeness of God's absolute holiness. They had witnessed great miracles when the ark was with them. Wouldn't you call a cloud by day and a fire by night the miracle of God? Having water come out of a split stone and bread come from heaven? They respected that God's ways and thoughts are much higher than ours. And that's Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. His ways are higher than your ways. Someone say amen. amen. So it's okay to say, Lord, I don't understand this, but I'm going to follow your way. Amen. That's okay. At least you're honest. Lord, help me to understand. He will. Understanding comes with time. Someone say amen. But don't try to put your pride in yourself above God. Let me tell you, you will lose. If not in this life, in the life to come. I tell people all the time, God's not nearly as impressed with you as you are with yourself. Let me reword that. God's not nearly as impressed with me as I am with myself. What do I mean by that? Listen, guys. God loves us. He proved that on the cross. But He's looking for a people, men and women, full of faith that have enough faith to walk in complete and total surrender to Him. Completely. Nothing held back. In truth, the more we try to bring God down to our worldly way of thinking and reasoning, the further away He will seem to be to you. Amen? You go try and make God in your image. Let me know how that works out for you. Anybody ever try to do that? It doesn't work out too well. People are doing that all over the planet. They want to live immoral so their God is immoral. And their God winks at immorality. You follow me? Listen, guys. God is unchangeable, immutable. He never changes. Never. Society changes. People change. Culture changes. That's why it's so important for us to hide the Word of God in our hearts that we not sin against Him. Someone say amen. Those who would draw near to God and have Him draw near to them are those who approach Him in reverence and holy fear. Reverence and holy fear. I'm not talking about this fear like God's up there at the baseball bat and about to whack you. I'm talking about fear like, hey, Daddy God loves me, but if I mess up, guess what? Spanking time's coming. Amen? All He's got to do is just lift His pinky off my life for one day and I'm miserable. Amen? Been there? Uzzah forgot that lesson. He didn't, either he didn't know the scripture or he knew the Torah, and it didn't matter to him. He knew what God's word said, it didn't matter. That would have been even worse. He forgot that lesson. The consequences were tragic for Uzzah, weren't they? Numbers 7, verse 6 through 9. So Moses, <laughs> I love this scripture. So Moses took the carts and the oxen and gave them to the Levites, the priest. Two carts and four oxen he gave to the sons of Gershon according to their service. And four carts and eight oxen he gave to the sons of Merari according to their service. These are families in the Levitical priesthood under the authority of Ithamar, the son of Aaron, the priest. Now look at this verse. But to the sons of Kohath he gave none. Why didn't he give carts to the sons of Kohath? They were supposed to carry the staff. And if he gave them a cart, guess what human nature says? It's easier to put it on the cart, guys, than for us to stick the Ark of the Covenant on our shoulders all day. So let's do it our way rather than God's way because it's easier. How many of you like easier? But to the sons of Kohath, he didn't give any carts because theirs was the service of the holy things which they carried on their what? Shoulders. Wow. There's a whole message 
in that they don't have time to get into tonight. But I love that. God's so wonderful. He was looking out for these guys. So he knows human nature. So he didn't give me carts or oxen because they were supposed to carry it on their shoulders. I love that, amen? It's like, wow, God's looking out for them. But what did David do? He put it on a cart. Where were the sons of Kohath? Not carrying it. I'm sure they were probably in the crowd, maybe wondering what in the world is this king doing? And why do you suppose the sons of Kohath were given no carts? To not tempt them to use them. Amen. Listen, guys, what Yeshua said, man, if, if your eye offends thee, pluck it out. Not talk about physically, but whatever is causing you to sin, man, get it out of your life. Amen. Amen. If there's some addiction or some other, get it out of your life. Stay away from it. Amen. Here's some facts about Uzzah for us to learn from, since these things were examples. If Uzzah had known the Torah, he could have avoided his own sin his own death, and better assisted the king. He could say, O oh, king, O oh, king live forever. Uh, I have a question. <laughs> Aren't we supposed to be carrying this on the shoulders of the Kohath and not on an oxen cart? You see, if you know the scripture in your heart, you can help others. Not only does it help prevent death in your own life, spiritual death, and one day eternal death, but you can eventually come to the place when your obedience is fulfilled where you can help others. Amen? Uzzah, we can learn, not knowing the Torah didn't make him guiltless. God didn't say, you know what, Uzzah? You didn't read that scripture. It's okay, I understand. We'll just let it go this time. He's not a politician. Someone say amen. God does what he says he's going to do, guys. We've got to learn that, amen? It's serious business. So just because you don't know what God has to say about some given thing, I'm talking about to you new guys here, does not make you guiltless before God. Amen. So what would that encourage me to do? Oh, I'd want to start opening the scripture and find out what the Lord says. <laughs> so I know how to live and how to be and how to surrender to him in every area of my life. Someone say amen. God's word is true whether we know it or not. <clears throat> Talking to a guy one time out at a mall, sharing the Lord with him about his need to turn to Messiah, surrender his life to him, and receive eternal life. And his thing was, well, I don't believe in God. He expected the conversation to stop there. I don't believe in God. Tell so, hey, your unbelief and your doubt doesn't change a thing. Amen. Amen. God's still on the throne. He's still going to do what He says He's going to do. The only thing that moves God is faith. Amen. So just because you don't believe or you don't know nothing, I hate to tell you this, but it means nothing in the span of eternity. You can stand before His throne one day and you can say, well, God, I just didn't believe. And he's going, oh, that's okay. Or as the book may be open and say, hey, this is as it was written. It's right here. Amen? Uzzah is a good lesson for us. Someone say amen. Especially for where America is today. If God had not struck Uzzah, it would have God made God a liar. Because he said, everyone, anyone, even the Kohath, who touched the holy things would what? Would die. Well, guess what? Who's it touched him? How can you blame God for doing what he said he was going to do? Someone say amen. amen. Don't let others set you up for failure. Amen. You got men or women in your life trying to drag you down. You find new men and new women in your life. Don't allow others to set you up for failure. Uzzah could have justified in his mind, well, you know, I know that God's word said this, but you know, the king's doing it like this, so it's got to be okay. No, everybody say no. no. I don't care what pastor, what preacher, what theologist says, anything contradicting the word of God, God's word reigns supreme. Amen. 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 Reigns supreme. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. 
in the first half of the scriptures, only half I want to talk about, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Just because you don't know something doesn't make it go bye-bye or go away. Someone say amen. So your lack of knowledge brings actually destruction. Now that word knowledge there, it's talking about your lack of knowledge about God, who He is, and what He said in His Word, knowledge of Him. How many multiplied multitudes have careened into the crevices of hell because of a lack of knowledge? And nobody here can say we don't have Bibles, we don't have churches, we don't have believers. We live in the land of plenty. Amen. No excuse. Almost done. Proverbs 3, 5 through 8, last scripture. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Stop trying to figure things out your way. God's way or the highway. Or else you'll end up being in a place that you wish you hadn't been. Amen? Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Let's pray. Father, we bless You. We thank You for the Word of God. Thank You that every Word of God is yes and amen. Some of us right here, right now, in this place, I'm not going to call you forward, but you need to get over some pride in your heart. You're here tonight. No one's looking around, but you say, you know what? There are some areas in my life I've been like Uzzah lately. And I've been trying to do things my way instead of God's way, but starting tonight, I say no more. And I say that I'm going to stop doing things my way and start doing things the Lord's way in the name of Yeshua. If that's you, lift your hands to the Lord all over the room. Hands are going up. Hands are going up. That is you. I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Yeshua, I pray for everyone whose hand is lifted up. Lord, they're saying tonight, absolute, complete, total surrender of their life to You to do things Your way, Father. We're not going to give You a part of us. We're going to give You all of us, Lord. Father, thank You for speaking to our hearts tonight. We don't want to end up like Uzzah, Lord. We want to learn from that example. We know that You love us and desire to bring grace and peace and blessings and mercy into our life. We can only experience those things by doing things Your way rather than our own. And from this day forth, in Yeshua's name, and everybody said, Amen and Amen.